you do it? Don't knock it over. You're making it shake. I can't see my cat. I know. Shh. So no, Cleo's on, chasing don't. you. Don't come on, no crawl. No one even knew I was there. Thank you. Shh, shh. I'm about to film. You shh. Hi lovelies, welcome to today's video and I'm back at it again with another Disney video which I'm excited about because it's been ages, well it feels like it's been ages anyway. I know I've done my like oofoofy, <laughs> oofoofy is that it's there? Collection and that's Disney but like a proper sit down, let's talk about Disney type video and I'm excited because my my countdown is slowly but surely ticking down. I mean, we're still over a year away, but I can be excited, okay? So this is um, things to consider before you book a Disney trip. And this isn't gonna be the most extensive list you'll find because I'm not the biggest Disney um, expert you'll find. Um, but maybe if I'm the only person you're subscribed to who does Disney, this could help um, because this is just what I know from uh, going to Disneyland Paris twice and to Disney World in Florida twice and now we're going for our third time which is actually crazy when I say that out loud. We only ever thought we'd go the once and that'd be it for a lifetime so, so bloody blessed. Um, so the first thing that I wrote down which is I think seriously has to be the first thing is to consider what your budget is. Don't go looking at hotels that and like where you want to stay and what you want to do and fall in love with things and get your heart set on things when you can't afford it like don't ever bankrupt yourself over a holiday and like that's the main thing i think just you have to have to be slightly sensible <laughs> I'm like the least sensible person when it comes to Disney, but I did that our first time to Florida. So that was back in 2012 and we just got the brochure and I flicked through and I weren't looking at any prices and I fell in love with the Animal Kingdom Lodge at Disney World. And I was like, I found the hotel to my boyfriend. This is it, this is the one, this is where we're gonna stay. Getting so excited, showed him it, he fell in love. And then he was like, Jess, this is like double our budget and I was like, Oh, and it, like it hurt the whole time like I'm not saying I was ungrateful for the holiday we went and did but it just hurt like and it I'd got my heart set and fallen in love with it we are staying there next year we've, we've had a little Disney glow up um but that first time we had to stay on international drive just because that's what we could afford and it was the holiday of a lifetime like don't get me wrong it was still the holiday of a lifetime we had the best time like when i came back every time i thought of stuff we'd done i was like crying because i was just like it was the best holiday of my life and anywhere we went or planned to go after that i was like it's good but it's not disney um so yeah just really make sure you know exactly what your budget is and i say exactly what your rough budget is is important um it's hard to know like you don't know what's going to happen down the line if, especially if you're booking like we did like a year and a half away um so it's hard to know, but like roughly what you know you can comfortably afford is important. Because the prices vary hugely from like if you stay like we did on say International Drive to if you stay in a deluxe Disney resort, the prices are insanely different. So just make sure you consider your budget beforehand. The second thing is your needs. So for me, um, you know, I have to consider um, accessible rooms now. I didn't back in 2012, but now I have to think about accessibility. So I need a room that is closer to the amenities of the hotel and um, close to bus stops and stuff like that. And um, I have to plan to have a wheelchair at the airport. and. Um, yeah, it's just really important, like, and again with your needs, um, you know, that's, that even comes down to stuff like, um, if you have little kids, you know, that is a whole different ball game and you're going to need stuff in the room and you, or say you're going to a villa, you're going to need stuff at the villa that people without kids won't need. So really think about, I know it's really <laughs> hard to not like just go, oh, but I want, want, want this. What you want is important, but what you need has to come first. So just consider what your needs are and what the needs of everyone in your group that are going is, are, is. The next thing I would say is like the next step is to consider whether you're going to stay 
on site or off site and for that I mean at Disney um, and once you've considered your budget this will sometimes make your decision for you like it did for us the first time um, and that's you know that's fine but like just if you are kind of in between where you could afford either that's there's a lot to consider in that little one <laughs> <laughs> group of considerations um because you've got to think about stuff like okay so if we stay off site will we use public transport will we hire a car how will we do that how much will that cost um how easy will that be for us and our group how realistic is it um and then same with staying at disney you know staying at disney puts you further away from if you wanted to do like florida beach days or um and you're further away from like universal and other place just other other places basically because disney is so huge so if you stay in disney you're kind of in disney <laughs> um so the first time we went we used public transport and we found it to be fine we were two able-bodied young um people with our kids and it was easy and uh everyone was pleasant and it was fine um but it did take quite a while and um, it made having multiple plans for the day more difficult. We did hire a car to go to Bush Gardens for the day and actually found that easier than we thought it would be. But just, yeah, consider which one you want to do. The reason we stayed at um, Disney the last two times is because when we actually plan out what we want to do in Florida on those holidays, uh, we have more that we want to do at Disney than anywhere else so if we're spending the most time at Disney it made sense for us to stay at Disney so that we could for instance like I did at Disneyland Paris when we went at Christmas I had to go in to the hotel in the afternoon have a nap and like revamp ready for the uh, for the evening and like the fireworks and dinner and because I can't physically do like a whole 12 hour stint um, on, on my feet I was stupid I should have used a wheelchair at Disneyland Paris listen I know, bad Jess, <laughs> you were stupid, <laughs> um, yeah I know that, um, but like uh, just having to decide stuff like that and also like the buses are really quick and easy, they came really often, like we were really surprised at how great the, the bus system was within Disney, I hear a lot of complaints about it but we honestly thought it was amazing um, and just stuff like just being in the Disney magic the whole time. So it's really up to you based on your holiday, but that is a big consideration on site or off site. Um, and that will totally depend on, again, your needs, your budget and what you want. So that's a big thing to consider. The next thing I would say is dining plan or not. So dining plans we have never had, but we have got booked for the next time we go, which is next year, 2019. And yeah, it's a big consideration. We didn't do it the first few times because we missed the opportunity to book when it was free and then we couldn't we couldn't afford it. Once we'd booked what we'd booked, we couldn't afford to save for that as well. Like so um we just were like, we'll just eat whilst we're out there. And I must say we spent a lot more on food staying at Disney and not having the dining plan than when we stayed out of Disney and didn't have the dining plan obviously because when we were staying off of Disney we were often eating just at like chain restaurants and food there is really cheap and you get a lot of it so you don't need to order a lot blah 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 but at Disney it's like any theme park even the theme parks in the UK it's a closed market so the prices are all marked up so we did try to spend a lot of money so this time we um, booked a dining plan and that was because we just thought it would make sense for us this time most of the time we were eating at Disney places so we were like we booked it when it was free that's a crazy deal um so most of our food is going to be like 90 percent of our food when we're on holiday is going to be for free um and we got the disney dining plan so that i think it goes quick serve disney dining plan and then deluxe we're like the middle one um so we get so much food like i don't think we're going to need money for for food unless we go to like universal which we are so yeah, dining plan or not is a big one. Um, I say really, really go and look at where, where the places you will want to eat most regularly are, because you can do that on the um, Disney website and Disney app. 
look up um, how much roughly is per person and kind of do a rough guesstimate of working out okay so if we spend that much each dinner how much will that cost for our whole group for the whole holiday and then add up and then compare that sorry to um, how much a dining plan costs and see which one works out best for you for us it was the dining plan this time especially because it was free um, so yeah that's a big consideration to make next thing to consider before you book a Disney holiday is when to go so obviously there are like so many things that go into deciding that um, obviously if you like have kids and you have to go in school holidays that's obviously you're tied by that um, but what school holiday you go in you know you have to consider that there are events on throughout the year so like Christmas is a huge deal Halloween's a huge deal at Disney um, and then you've got spring and they and they do lots of stuff lots of stuff for spring and they do lots of stuff for the like you know Epcot food and wine and there's so many other things that you can like if you really wanted to go for a specific event or a specific time of year um then obviously that's something to take into consideration but also like weather um we go in the month of September or like, every time we've gone that's when we've gone and that's when we're going next year and the reason we made that decision was back then we were looking at what was cheapest because we had no ties of like kids and our work is like really flexible so we could both like basically go whenever we wanted so <laughs> oh Cleo she's rolling around by my feet she's so cute she wants my attention <laughs> so yeah um we were like okay so what's cheapest and also when is the best like weather like because we want it to be hot but not too hot and like i don't really want to go when it's going to be like raining 24 7 i know florida rains like a lot anyway but like and when is hurricane season and all of these things you've got to consider and we sat down with a travel agent back in 2012 and the cheapest and best weather for us was september so we were like yeah okay we'll go then and it was perfect it, yes it rained but it dries up in like literally two seconds i've never in my life worn like a coat or a mac or a uh, poncho or anything because even if you do get wet even if you get stuck in it you get wet two seconds later you're dry because it's so hot and dry out there and like humid and like it's humid and dry the opposite things i think so that might have been stupid of me but yeah um we just found it perfect so last time when we went was in 2016 and we went in the same time again it was cheap and um not cheap but like disney cheap and um the weather was lovely and again we had the most amazing time so that's what our consideration was but that will change your budget hugely as well the difference in price of if i went a few weeks earlier in august is insane so you have to look at prices of when you can go if you can obviously if you've only got like one week of the year that you can go then that's where you're gonna have to go but if you've got options really spend time weighing them up in terms of weather and um park busyness as well like september is pretty dead like we actually last time it was busier than the first time we went but it's still pretty dead like compared to summer it's crazy because all the kids have gone back so you get on rides easier and you don't queue as long for things and just stuff like that and that affects your holiday as well so when it comes to deciding when to go obviously you've got price um weather busyness of parks and then if there's any events you really want to go out there for like if you absolutely love halloween you're going to want to go at halloween so all of those things go into when you want to go the next consideration to make is who to book with and this might be affected by price and some other factors that i said um the first time we went we went with thompson's and it wasn't great <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't great. We have not flown with them or used them for anything ever since. Um, actually, are they even around anymore or did they go into like liquidation? Can't remember. Um, but yeah, we booked through them. Some people book everything separately. Some people like, we prefer to just do it as a package. That's actually Ben's preference. I wouldn't really care either way. But Ben just has peace of mind knowing one person is dealing with our whole booking and one place to go if we've got problems, etc, etc. Thompson's was terrible we had a nine hour delay on our flights and they handled it horrifically maybe I should do a story time about that um I, I forget that it even happened because I look back at the holiday like you do with every holiday you look back with like rose tinted glasses and think of all the good stuff which is a good thing but yeah it was crazy they and then the, the rep there was terrible and oh it just was a mess 
Second time we went, we went with Thomas Cook and that was just because they were the cheapest we could find. So we went with them. And this time we have gone with uh, Virgin and that is just because we had a little bit more money to spend and my brother um, flies a lot. <laughs> goes on holiday like every other week it seems um and he's flown with everyone and he was like i've never had better service but also like for me he was like for you and your like obviously my health problems um he was like i've never had more leg room than the premium virgin flights and we not always go for premium anyway because of my legs and everything and my health issues um but yeah he was like if you can request because of your health uh, the front row of the premium seats he goes you literally have like six foot of room um, of leg room it was like it was in it's insane it's the most comfortable flight so that really swayed it for us um so that's who we're going with and then with disneyland paris the first time we booked it all just separately uh, actually we, we didn't stay at disney we stayed because we, we were also visiting just paris um so we booked uh through it was through like lastminute.com and then we just bought our disney tickets at, at the at the uh, kiosks at the front of the park and this time when we most recently went to disneyland paris we booked directly through disney so we've kind of done a whole host of things um and yeah that's really like a consideration to make because it will it will affect your price virgin is a lot more um than other places and it depends like what you think is important but like if you didn't care about extra leg room because you don't really need it and you're happy where you are then obviously get the cheap seats and it's going to be so much better you're going to have more Disney, uh, spending money to have um but we have to make those considerations for other reasons so it's like it's just something to really think about it's not just i don't think it's just as easy as going oh i like that travel agent that's who we'll book with um because also everyone does things differently and also we go in and get brochures and we get a vibe from the people that work there and that can really put you off or convince you to do it so yeah just who to book with and how to book it is a consideration to make before you just go in with the first person you find the next consideration is how long you want to go for um obviously i will always say go for as long as you possibly can because there's too much to do and if i could go out there if i won the lottery i'd go out there for a straight month 100 percent, i'd go out there for a straight month and it would be the time of my life <laughs> actually if i won the lottery and it was like millions i'd go for like six months but yeah you get what i mean you can never fit everything in like there's just so much to do and to see and yeah so don't get too hung up on that but like just think about um Obviously, if you're getting um, hours off at work, you know, how much holiday do you get and all that kind of thing is going to dictate how, mu how much time you can go for if you have kids that are at school. Um, for us, like I said, we're really lucky in that we're like pretty free and open and can go whenever we want. So um, we are going for two weeks. Um, that's because of that's how much we could afford. If we could afford three weeks, we would have gone for three weeks, um, but we could only afford two weeks. and it's hard because again it comes down to what you want because we could probably have stayed outside of disney and gone for three weeks for the same price as staying in a deluxe disney hotel for two weeks you know what i mean but that's what we wanted to do and that's what we chose also i don't know that my body could hack three weeks really to be honest um because <laughs> disney holidays are strenuous like it's not a relaxing holiday it's so fun and jam-packed that it's exhausting <laughs> um but yeah just how long to go for is a big thing because again it will really affect your price and think about again how much you want to fit in um my, some of my family have just been and they went for three weeks and they went everywhere it looks like they went everywhere like to um to the florida beaches and to uh, nasa and universal and disney and if you've got like that much to do and you can afford it then obviously go for like as long as you can afford but again don't bankrupt yourself over a holiday think realistically and think also about your spending money and how much you're going to, have to save for that and really think about how much time you want to go for last thing to consider before you book is what's important to you and i've kind of touched on this throughout but um just that's a huge thing to consider so for us um me and ben have quite different like what's important to us in as individuals but obviously we come together and so what's important to us as individuals becomes what's important to us as a couple and that's what we book about ben really likes um 
the highest luxury <laughs> resorts like that most he can afford is where he wants to stay he really really likes not having a nice hotel room to come back to and um that bothered me slightly less because you don't actually spend that much time there but to him it was really important and this time because of ever since 2012 i've been in love with animal kingdom lodge that is where we're staying and I'm so excited. Um, also because I'm unwell, like because I've been so unwell and I have so many health problems, I just find, I have found that the highest like luxury you go resort, the better service you get and the more you're looked after and um, the more your like health concerns are taken seriously. That's just what I've found. Um, so we were in Caribbean Beach the last time we stayed and we abs we absolutely loved it but I was like imagine if it was even better than that and so was Ben so that was important to us um also like I was just kind of touching on my um accessibility needs are important so that's why we wanted to stay at Disney because it's just so much easier to just be in one place where we're going to spend the most amount of time the buses are really easy the way you get the wheelchairs and give them back although faffy is something that we understand how to do now because we've done it um so that's easy for us um also like what's important to you in terms of rides relaxation shows um fireworks meeting characters um pool time downtime water parks there's so much to consider and that will affect your holiday because what are you going to book like the first time we went we had tickets to everything we went to universal disney world all of the parks at disney world um we went to both parks at universal we went to bush gardens we went to sea world and the sea i think there was a sea world water park and discovery cove and then literally as soon as i got back blackfish had come out and i got shown it and i was like well we're never going there again i'm never ever ever giving them money again i am done i'm so upset that we went there which yeah so we've never gone back and i never would go back but like it, see, see what i mean that changes because then that's a cost that we don't have because we were paying for sea world tickets now we don't pay for sea world tickets and we were paying for bush gardens and then i found out that sea world owned bush gardens i think i think sea world owned bush gardens or they used to and so we didn't we don't go there so it's like weighing up what's important to you will change everything and also because like rides are really important to us we are thrill seekers so like rides are important and the big rides are our faves and so that's another reason we wanted to stay at disney because you get a longer time beforehand to book all your fast passes up and fast passes go like that like you're on your day everything gets booked it's insane you think oh who's gonna be on there on the day oh everyone i've got none of my fast passes like it's it's crazy and dis and dining re reservations as well you can do that like 180 days beforehand when you're a disney guest um so all of that is important to us um so yeah just really write down a list of like what you want out of the holiday before you book it because you, there's nothing worse than going oh yeah just give us everything and then sitting down and going we've just paid for all that and actually i don't really care about going there or oh we didn't book that and now i've got to add it on and you know what i mean it's just something good to write down before you book so that's it those were my little things to consider before booking a disney holiday i know i wouldn't have covered everything so if you are a disney expert or even if you're not and you just have a better tip than mine or a tip to add please leave it in the comments because it will help anyone that reads them um and yeah it's just nice to help each other out so yes if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and and subscribe i would love to have you and i upload three new videos every single week on tuesdays fridays and sundays and i'm really trying to do more of everything so like those that wanted disney i'm trying to do more disney those that wanted fashion i'm trying to do more fashion those that wanted halls i'm trying to do more walls i'm trying to just 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 make you all happy so yes hope you're all having a beautiful magical day and i will see you again soon bye